Today's edition of NFL Power Rankings is presented by ButcherBox. Take the guesswork out of finding high-quality meat and seafood that you can actually trust. And with your first order with ButcherBox, they're giving you a free turkey just in time for Thanksgiving as turkey prices continue to soar everywhere. ButcherBox.com slash NFL Daily and use code NFL Daily to claim that deal. Let's break down worst to first our power rankings. Carolina, yeah, they're bad. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Uh, they have real issues right now. They check in at number 32 on our power rankings. Let's move to number 31. The Houston Texans, who, hey, they were on by. They actually dropped a spot because the Commanders, who we'll get to in a little bit, won this past week. Let's go to number 30, the Detroit Lions. They are 1-4. and four. They're also coming off their bye week. They slide a little bit. Other teams won, so the, the one-loss teams stay near the bottom. I'm asking you guys to share today's video. Help us out. Share this video on Facebook, on Twitter. Text it to a friend, whatever. Click the little share icon. Send it wherever you want it to go. The more shares we get, the more views we get, and that means I get to keep my job. So help me out. Share today's video right now. Number, or number, oh, I said number. It's not a word. Number 29, the Chicago Bears. <laughs> how do you not, how did they lose that game against the I know it was Thursday Night Football, whatever. You had no business losing that game against the Commanders, who are actually number 28 on our power rankings this week. The Bears are not that great. I don't buy the Commanders either. Carson Wentz is now going to miss some time. I don't know how much better he is than Taylor Heineke. There's, there's good Carson Wentz. We haven't seen that much of as of late this year. Number 27, the Las Vegas Raiders. They were also on by. Nate Hobbs is on IR. They got to start winning games quickly or it's going to be a bit of a lost season in Vegas. The Pittsburgh Steelers, who have been really inconsistent this year, stunned everyone with their win. They moved up several spots this week, jumping up to number 26 on our power rankings. One of the biggest sliders this week, the Jacksonville Jags. They were 19 last week because it was three weeks ago. I said, hey, the Jags are good. And they've lost th several games in a row now and making me look pretty stupid uh, for making that proclamation. Many of us, including the NFL schedule makers, thought the Denver Broncos were going to be good this year. They have a bunch of primetime games, and they are not worthy at all. And look, Broncos fans... I am sorry your team is having a rough year. I really am. Um, I have no rooting interest in or against Denver from that standpoint, but I am tired of them being on primetime. That is the only football game on. I am an addict. It's the only one I'm able to watch that like matters beyond like watching the condensed versions, which I do too. But I'm sick of watching the Denver Broncos on primetime. Get them off my screen. I'm sorry, Broncos fans. But you also know I'm right. That offense is offensive. So if you agree with me and you are sick and tired of watching the Denver Broncos in primetime slots, and we're not done with them yet, unfortunately, show me by typing me in the comments section. The ad break comes here on YouTube. Head down to the comments and flood it with me's. The more you type it, maybe we'll have better success getting a flex game or two from Denver. Number 23, the New Orleans Saints. They slide down a few more spots. They've been a pretty inconsistent team so far this year. Andy Dalton, Jameis Winston. It's not looking that great overall. Some rather disappointing 2-4 and four teams here, including the Cleveland Browns. Uh, you know, they were biding their time until Deshaun Watson gets back from his suspension. But he hasn't looked good. The, the Browns have not looked good. And I am fairly concerned with the way they've played so far this year, and I, it might be too late by the time Deshaun Watson gets back. Now, today's show is made possible by ButcherBox. They take the guesswork out of finding high-quality meat and seafood you guys can actually trust. Get just what you want delivered right to your doorstep. Free shipping, by the way, for the continental U.S. with no surprise fees. Variety of box plan options from curated to customized. You can change your plan whenever you want. There are exclusive member deals so you can save big on your favorite cuts. And they're offering a special deal just in time for Thanksgiving. Because the main course for Thanksgiving dinner can sometimes be a main source of stress. Not anymore. 
ButcherBox is, is offering our listeners free turkey with their first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash NFL Daily and use code NFL Daily to get one 10 to 14 pound turkey free in your first box. That's butcherbox.com slash NFL Daily to and use code NFL Daily to claim this deal. I love ButcherBox. The burgers are great. The bacon is fantastic. And don't even get me started on the steak side of things as well. Don't have to add as much seasoning or rubs or whatever as maybe you would do for the, the grocery store version that isn't nearly as good. Mouthwatering meals with ButcherBox. And the turkey deal is fantastic. I mean, look, turkey prices are higher than ever. ButcherBox giving you a free 10 to 14 pound one. Links in the comments section and the description. It's promo code NFL Daily at ButcherBox.com slash NFL Daily. Speaking of birds, the Arizona Cardinals at number 21. That is how you transition, folks. Uh, I don't think they're very good this year. Uh, I have a lot of concerns and doubts about this offense. DeAndre Hopkins is coming back, but A.J. Green looks terrible. Rondell Moore is not used properly. The, the Cardinals can have some fun run schemes, but they look a mess on offense. Cliff Kingsbury is like, I'd be open to, uh, to giving up play calling. No one on the staff with any play calling experience, so he's not going to do that. It's, it's a bit of a dumpster fire. All right, let's talk some overachieving teams. The Seattle Seahawks are three, and they just took down the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, or quick note, Cardinals for the first time in three weeks dropped from number 18, by the way. Seattle jumps up four spots, and the Falcons jump up seven spots. Both of these teams I have been very impressed and pleasantly surprised by. If you, and I've said this before, I thought they were going to be fighting for the number one overall pick. Here they are legitimately fighting for a playoff spot as we sit. I think both of those teams, Seattle and Atlanta, are two great answers to our next question. Who do you think is the most underrated NFL team? Is it the Seahawks, the Falcons, somebody else altogether? Let me know right now in the comment section. Indianapolis Colts got a big one about Jonathan Taylor against the Jags. They're now 3-2-1. and one. They've been really up and down and consistent, but that's a huge win for them. And the Patriots and Bailey Zappi, producer Nick's guy, uh, they look pretty good. Hey, when there's not much pressure and the first read's there, Zappi knows where to go with the football. He's a smart player, just doesn't have the great arm strength. But the Patriots heading upwards. They moved up four spots, same as the Colts. Going in the wrong direction are the Los Angeles Rams. They are 16 on our power rankings. Yeah, they're 3-3 three and three now, and that's awesome. The offensive line's a mess. They're really injured, and they're not playing well, and there's a, been a theme for all Sean McVay's team. When the O-line is bad, mm, the quarterback plays struggles, which makes plenty of sense, right? Now, we will keep you guys covered with everything going on around the NFL, especially the trade rumors. The NFL trade deadline is just around the corner. It's always way too early. We've got you guys covered. Hit that big red button and subscribe for free right now. Number 15, the Tennessee Titans. They are 3-2. and two. They've cut Joshua in practice squad. That's fine. Uh, they actually dropped two spots only because other teams got wins moved ahead of them. But don't read too much into that. Tennessee is a playoff threat. The Miami Dolphins were once pushing for a top five spot in our power rankings, and now they have slid down the wrong direction. Injuries, bad offensive line play. Maybe the return of Tua will boost things. A common theme this year in the NFC is your assumed contenders, the Rams, the Packers, the Bucks, even the Niners, their offenses are not good. And that is the case in Green Bay. And I, I, I will raise some concern. I'm not pushing the panic meter right now. But the Packers' O-line is bad. And Aaron Rodgers, with not good playmakers around him, get a little bit of the late-stage McCarthy vibes, where he's just not quite in all the way. He doesn't trust his supporting cast, and there's problems in Green Bay. Now, the Bengals, who have benefited from a incredibly easy slate of quarterbacks early on, they've played two current starters in their six games kind of crazy right well they're 12 or three and three in the number 12 big comeback win over the saints joe burrow finally got going the niners and their decimated defense drop three spots from number eight because they could not take down the falcons the niners again the nfc it's wide open folks 
Now, I think this week's slate of games are not the best. So you got in what I think is the most intriguing matchup. The Chiefs coming off a tough loss, or the 49ers. Type in KC to take Kansas City, or SF for San Francisco. Okay, I've been doing power rankings here at Chat Sports. We do them AP poll style now. But I've been doing them whether individual or AP poll style for years. And I don't think there has ever been a time where the Jets and the Giants were two top 10 teams for us here. Yet here are the New York Jets, one of our biggest risers, up six spots. They're 4-2. and two. They blew out the Green Bay Packers, a, a, a multi-score uh, win. They look, the defense looks awesome. They haven't even needed Zach Wilson to play well. He's been just game managing with ease. So are you buying the New York Jets and maybe the really good AFC East this year? Call them the AFC boost with the NFC side in a minute here because the worst team is the Patriots at 17. They're all at least 500. Pretty crazy, right? So are you buying the Jets this year? B for buy, S for sell. Number nine, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They drop a couple spots. <laughs> Offense has issues. They can't really run the football that well. This is the, this nine through like five, and even actually nine through four, I think are good teams. I think there are only three great teams in the NFL. There's a big butt with each team, but they're all top ten because you think they're good. Number eight, so I'll focus on the butt because like we know why they're able to go right. Lamar Jackson, blah, blah, blah. Ah, passing game is not that consistent. And they've blown three games this year. Every game they've lost, they've had a lead and or a big lead. They got to get that stuff figured out. The Chargers jump up several spots to number seven. They are four and two, the lowest rated of only the handful of four and two squads, but that's why they get put there. Uh, they're really decimated up front, injury-wise especially. That's a big red flag there. The Dallas Cowboys... I was saying the sky is falling, season's over when Dak Prescott got hurt. And then they went 4-1 and one with Cooper Rush, and now Dak's about to return. Hey, NFC's wide open. They can make a run. Now, some in the media might tell you the Giants are the worst 5-1 and one team ever. I don't think that's true. I have doubts about Daniel Jones, sure. But this coaching staff is awesome. Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, Don Martindale, the rest of the crew, they are very, very impressive. I love what the Giants have done. And they're winning football games outside of the game against the Cowboys simply by not making mistakes. Everyone else is fumbling, throwing INTs, and the Giants keep finding ways to be steady, avoid the big mistake, and win games. Five and one, they're top five. They move up four spots this week. Cowboys, Giants, and Eagles, as we all foresaw coming, are in the top six of our power rankings. Who saw that coming after week one, right? Nobody. So is the NFC beast back? Why for yes and for no. The Minnesota Vikings are number four because they're five and one, right? And they're the, the one of the only five and one teams left. And they've yet to play a, a, a complete game yet. They've had great little runs and then kind of some weak stretches and found ways to win football games. We've not seen their final form, but they've played pretty well overall. They're number four, but I believe there are only three truly great or good football teams. Everyone else has some issues. The Chiefs are number three. They, of course, lost this past week to the Bills, who are number two, which I think makes sense for the Chiefs at three, Bills at two. And finally... The Philadelphia Eagles check in at number one. They are the only undefeated team left in the NFL. I will make note, it was not a unanimous decision. We still cannot get everyone on board here at Chat Sports with, with Philly being the number one unanimous team. I have them at number one, but not everyone did. All right, before we go, grade our power rankings great us we can take feedback whether it's constructive or just being mean it's the internet we're, we're okay with it great us a b c d or f 